A common factor linking these women appears to be a combination of social deprivation, alcohol abuse and the early death of a parent. Catherine Lynch, née Catherine Driscoll, also known as Kate Driscoll, was born in Swansea in 1880, the third of the Driscoll's eight children. Catherine Driscoll's father Jeremiah Driscoll had emigrated from County Cork to work in the Cornfellan Tin Plate Works in Quimbra. He married Mary Ellen Sheehan in Swansea in 1876. A drunkard with a history of convictions for brawling and public drunkenness, Jeremiah lived with his wife, children, parents and sister in a single house in Skinner Street, Swansea, later moving to a larger house in Baptist Well Street. Jeremiah Driscoll died due to an industrial accident on Monday May 7, 1900, dying in hospital later that day. With the family's breadwinner gone, Catherine, now commonly known as Kate, took a job as a domestic servant to a Swansea publican and his family in 1901. She rapidly descended into crime and alcoholism, and over the next few years was regularly convicted of prostitution, theft, and alcohol-related public order offences. She first appeared in court charged with indecency in May 1903. In June 1904, she was described in court for the first time as a prostitute, her conviction on this occasion was for the public use of obscene language, an offence for which she would be repeatedly prosecuted that year. By the following year, Driscoll was descending into alcoholism, and on the 20s of March 1905 she was sentenced to 14 days hard labour following repeated convictions for being drunk and disorderly. On 19 August 1905 she was again sentenced to 14 days hard labour for riotous behaviour in Castle Street. On 17 November 1905 she was arrested, along with her friends Selina Rushbrook and Lily Argent, for the theft of a sea captain's purse. By this time Driscoll had been convicted of indecency, obscene language, for counts of drunkenness and two counts of being a disorderly prostitute. All three women were found not guilty on grounds of insufficient evidence. Days later Driscoll was convicted yet again of drunkenness, and sentenced to a month's imprisonment. The increasing severity of her sentences did not deter Driscoll. Within days of her release from this sentence she was arrested yet again for riotous behaviour. The case against her was adjourned as she pleaded that she was willing to go to St. Joseph's convent. Less than a month later, yet another charge of rioting was abandoned by the prosecutor as she was serving a term of imprisonment on another charge. Her next court appearance being an allegation of the theft of four pounds from a sailor with whom she had made a promiscuous acquaintance, but she was released without charge when it transpired that she had no money on her at the time of her arrest. In August 1906 Kate Driscoll married John Lynch, becoming Catherine Lynch, and settled with him at 96 Michaels Row. She continued drinking heavily. In May 1907 she was once again sentenced to a month's imprisonment, this time for the theft of a purse and four shillings. Catherine Lynch's descent into alcoholism and crime continued, and in June 1908 she yet again was prosecuted, on this occasion for the theft of three half-crowns from a coal miner who had been in the woman's company. Lynch denied being with him, telling the court that I don't go with a dirty little scamp like that. It was noted that Lynch by now had 41 previous convictions, and she was sentenced to two months' imprisonment. On the evening of 19 October 1908, aged 28, Catherine Lynch was preparing to go out to a place of amusement. She was washing her face and hands in her Michael's Row home, when she went to sit on the stairs. At 7.15pm she suddenly fell backwards. John Lynch tried to give her a drink of water but she was unable to drink it. He carried her upstairs to bed, and summoned a doctor. Upon Dr. Jones Powell's arrival he found her dead in bed. Her death was attributed to syncope, fainting, induced by alcoholism. At the coroner's inquest, John Lynch testified that Catherine had been drunk at the time. Challenged by the coroner as to why he had allowed her to drink herself into such a condition, John stated that she had been an alcoholic for as long as he had known her, and that he felt obliged to give her money for drink as if I didn't she used to take it off me. The coroner was unsympathetic to Catherine Lynch, describing her as one of a class who were a nuisance to themselves, their husbands and everybody else. He considered Lynch's death as part of a pattern of increasing drunkenness among women in Swansea. The jury returned a verdict of death from syncope brought on by excessive drinking. 
she was buried in Danagraig Cemetery on 23 October 1908. Lily Argent or Lily Bumster was born on 10 August 1886 in Swansea. Her parents were William Argent, a local stonemason, and Margaret Argent Nayweb, a servant in an eating house in Cross Street, Swansea. The family lived in Maddox Street, Swansea. Lily was the second of the Argent's six children. She grew up in a home in which drunkenness and crime were commonplace. Throughout Lily's childhood, Margaret Argent and her sisters Annie Price, Harriet Griffiths and Elizabeth Winter made regular appearances in the courts for alcohol-related public order offences. Following the death of her mother in 1906 Argent descended into alcoholism. In August 1905, aged 19, she moved out of the family home. Lily Argent received her first criminal conviction, a prosecution for drunkenness. As was customary at the time for a first offence, she was discharged on condition she enter the local workhouse. Within weeks she was arrested again and given a one ten shillings fine. By this time she had been discharged from the workhouse and was lodging in 68 The Strand in Swansea. She was one of only two unmarried female boarders in an otherwise entirely male establishment. Lily Argent was again arrested for riotous behaviour and imprisoned for a month. She was arrested yet again for drunkenness in February and December 1910. On the latter occasion, the arresting officer described her as using most abusive and indecent language. In 1913 she married Michael John Bumster, the son of the owners of the boarding house in which she was living. A year later her husband enlisted in the army on the outbreak of the First World War. Lily Argent was again arrested for riotous behaviour and imprisoned for a month. As a young woman with no means of support these arrests did not discourage her from crime, and on 17 November that year she was arrested, along with her friends Selina Rushbrook and Catherine Driscoll, both well-known local thieves and prostitutes for the theft of obtaining £5.10. shillings. On this occasion, all three were found not guilty of the theft on grounds of insufficient evidence. On 26 October 1914 Lily Bumster was again prosecuted for assault, the last of her arrests. On 13 December 1916, she was suffering from severe tuberculosis. Lily Bumster died of cardiac failure, aged 30. She was buried, along with her parents in the family plot in Danagraig Cemetery, Port Tennant, Swansea. Selina Jenkins or Rushbrook was born in Swansea in June 1880 and classed as a petty criminal, prostitute and brothel keeper. Selina and Jenkins was the eldest of the three Jenkins. She was baptised into the Church of England at Christ Church in Oystermouth Road. Her father was a basket maker from Cornwall, Francis Jenkins settled with his family in Rodney Street in Swansea. Francis Jenkins died in May 1885 at the age of 30 leaving Catherine Jenkins to raise the couple's three daughters alone. By early 1899, Selina was no longer living with her family, but had moved into Vaughan's lodging house on the Strand, Swansea. Selina Jenkins first came to the attention of the authorities in February 1899, when she was arrested for riotous behaviour. Given the choice of seven days hard labour in Swansea prison or a 13 shillings and sixpence fine, she opted for the custodial sentence, the first of her many spells in prison. Records describe her as having an imperfect education and an occupation of prostitute. In June 1899, Jenkins was convicted of offences against decency in a lane near the Sailor's Rest with Swansea resident Thomas O'Connell. Jenkins and O'Connell were each sentenced to a one-pound fine fine or ten days imprisonment. A report at the time in the South Wales Daily Post de Jenkins as looking very shamefaced. Soon afterwards she had progressed from prostitution to procuring, operating a brothel in Welsh Harp Court, Swansea. On 19 September 1899, P.C. Umpleby and P.C. Hawkins attended the brothel, and witnessed circumstances which irrefutably stamped the house as being used for immoral purposes. Sentenced to a £10 three shillings and sixpence fine or a month's hard labour, Jenkins told the judge I'll take the month, 
and was duly sent to Swansea Prison on 2 October 1899. Shortly after her release she was arrested for disorderly conduct, and in November 1899 was sentenced to seven days imprisonment, this time without being given the option to pay a fine in lieu of a custodial sentence. On 17 April 1900, she was again arrested for riotous behaviour, and on the 11th of May that year was duly sentenced to seven days imprisonment. Following her release in mid-May Jenkins moved out of Vaughan's lodging house into new lodgings at 4 Owens Court, Swansea. In October 1900 Jenkins was convicted, along with fellow prostitutes, of the theft of a half-sovereign and half-crown from Benjamin Williams in the Bird in Hand pub in the High Street. All three were sentenced to a month's hard labour. On her release Jenkins was convicted for public drunkenness for which she received a seven-day prison sentence. She moved into new accommodation in Neptune Court, and in May 1901 married shoemaker Ebenezer Rushbrook, with whom she had lived for the previous five months. In June 1901 an unidentified woman, likely to have been Selina Rushbrook, was arrested by PC Mags of the Swansea Borough Police. As Mags attempted to march her to the police station, Ebenezer Rushbrook approached the pair, told the officer that the woman in question was his wife, and demanded she be released. PC Mags declined to do so, the woman fell to the floor, and as Mags bent to hold her Ebenezer Rushbrook jumped onto his back and knocked his hat off to the ground. As Mags reached to collect his hat the woman took the opportunity to flee. Ebenezer was duly arrested and sentenced to a fine of four shillings or one month's imprisonment. Shortly afterwards, in August 1901, Ebenezer was convicted of knowingly living on the earnings of his wife's immorality and sentenced to three months hard labour. In December of that year Selina was convicted of the theft of a purse from a sailor, and sentenced to two months hard labour owing to her lengthy criminal record, her accomplice, fellow prostitute Rose Willis, received the lighter sentence of one month's imprisonment. Soon after her release, the Rushbrooks moved to Bridgend. In November 1902 Selina was convicted, along with fellow prostitute Sarah Musgrove, of stealing a watch in the York Hotel, Bridgend from William Howells of Coity. Ebenezer was convicted of receiving the watch and pawning it, and all three were sentenced to one month's hard labour. Late 1905, Ebenezer received a 14-day custodial sentence for behaving like a madman towards police. After this incident the couple separated, with Selina returning to Vaughan's lodging house in Swansea. Arrested on 17 November 1905 along with her friends Catherine Driscoll and Lily Argent for the theft of a sea captain's purse, all three were found not guilty. In the early hours of 17 February 1907, shortly after midnight, Selina Rushbrook was walking near Swansea Docks in the company of King's Dock labourer Ernest Witts. They had been drinking in local public houses. Rushbrook led him to Pottery Bridge, a drawbridge separating North Dock from a canal. While crossing the narrow bridge Rushbrook caught her foot on a beam, and fell into the lock below. At the subsequent inquest, held at the nearby Adelaide Hotel on 18 February, Witz testified that after Rushbrook had fallen from the bridge he made no attempt to save her as he was unable to swim. A verdict of accidental death was recorded, and at the direction of the coroner the jury added a note that inadequate lighting had made the area around Pottery Bridge a dark and dangerous place at night and that the local authorities should take steps to improve lighting. Selina Rushbrook was buried in the Jenkins family plot in Danagraig Cemetery, Port Tennant, Swansea.